that your way and will will be done, God. Move us out of the way, God. Any distractions, God, move it out of the way. Any stumbling blocks, God, move it out of the way. Any hindrance, God, move it out of the way. Hallelujah, God. We bless you for what you're going to do on today. We bless you for the word that's coming forth today. We bless you for the souls that's going to be saved today. We bless you for the healing today. We bless you for the deliverance today. We bless you for a free mind, a saved mind, God. We bless you for good health, God. Hallelujah, God. We declare and we decree these things right now, God. For we know that we do have the victory in you. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we thank you today. We thank you for allowing us to come into the building on today. We thank you for Aaron breath to breathe, God. We thank you for the use of our limbs, God. God, we thank you for keeping us throughout the week, keeping us, our family, our children, God, our friends, God, our church, God. Thank you for keeping us, oh God. God, we come lifting those up, God, who are burdened down on today. Those whose spirit may be low, God. Those who may be dealing with depression. Those who may be dealing with anxiety, God. Those who are just in a dark place and can't feel you, can't see you, God. We lift them up to you right now. We don't know the situation, God. We don't know what they feel and what they deal with, God, but we know that you do, God. And we know that you have all power, all power to do all things, God. So, God, do it right now for them, God. Do it right now for them, God. Whatever they stand in the need of, God, do it on today. Hallelujah, God. Do it on today. We're going to go ahead and praise you for what's going to be done. We're going to go ahead and bless you for what's going to be done. him a word on today, God, that will sit in our hearts and our minds, God, that we will be changed and we won't be the same, God. Lord, we just thank you for it now. We thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for what you're doing right now in this hour. Come on and bless the name of the Lord in this place. Come on and bless the name of the Lord in this place like you believe it. Like you believe it.
let them know how much you are grateful to see them in the house of the Lord. Come on, let's fellowship one with another. Come on, don't be lazy. Get up. Go fellowship with someone. together. Give them a hand. We'll be celebrating together uh, this Saturday, this Saturday at 6 p.m. at Cribs Kitchen in Duncan, South Carolina, as we celebrate together uh, Valentine's Day. In case husbands, you don't realize Valentine is, I heard women don't answer for them. Valentine is when, men? Tuesday. No excuse. Make sure you have some for your Valentine's. And so we will not have Tuesday night teaching uh, this Tuesday. We will not have Tuesday night teaching this Tuesday. Uh, we want to make sure that you have time to spend with the one you love. Just a few other announcements. Um, let's see. The South Carolina Baptist Association will be having a leadership institute. Uh, that will be Saturday the 25th. Your pastor will be one of uh, the presenters in this institute, it will be at New Trinity Baptist Church at 10 a.m. Uh, February the 25th, that's a Saturday. Uh, the cost is $20, but for the first 10 people to sign up, uh, we will give you a scholarship. There's a sign-up sheet out there if you want to go and can't afford a $20. We are going to sponsor 20 of our members to go and be a part of this training. Don't sign your name if you don't intend to go. Leave that space for somebody who is intending to go to get leadership skills, to come back, and to be more effective in your area of influence, uh, your church, and even your community. So the sign-up sheet is out there on the little desk. You will see it. It is labeled uh, Leadership Institute. That will be February the 25th at 10 a.m. And also February 25th at 4 p.m., we're going to have our soul food feast. Oh, man, I'm looking forward to it. So if you have not, hear me, if you have not uh, let Ms. Onitha know what your dish is you bring in, please let her know today. We want to make sure that we have a good variety and we don't want to have a soul food feast of all green beans. <laughs> okay. We want a good variety. So whatever your specialty is, 
Uh, now, she has instructed me that I got to cook oxtails again this year. So if you haven't had oxtails, you haven't made it to heaven yet. And so we... <laughs> For you, Twiggy, I'll put some gravy on them. Yes, they have gravy on them. All right, so that's going to be the 25th at 4 p.m. at the Rob Building. That's the same building. We had our Christmas party right there in front of the Y. And so I want you to be a part of this. If you're not cooking, just come and enjoy. Uh, we're going to have games. We're going to have music. We're just going to celebrate as we close out Black History Month. Also, I want to thank those of you who participated in our seed offering last month. There are some who ask, is it too late? It's never too late to sow into the ministry. And so thank you so much. I think we receive about $2,900 in seed money that will go toward doing ministry. And so thank you so much for your giving. And those of you who have to do it later, please join us in that. Uh, we will be starting our prison ministry real soon, so if you have not received an application and you want to be a part of that ministry, please see Sheila Fudge. Uh, fill the application out. The ID that you have to put on there must be in color. Must be in color. Bring the application back and give it to her, and we're going to send all the application in at one time. We'll be going to the Leaf Correctional Institute. Uh, down there uh, ministering to those wonderful women of God that are down there. And so we're excited about that. Today, immediately after service, our men have prepared some soup and cornbread for you. Uh, it's going to be hot, fresh, and ready when we get through preaching. Listen, don't rush me because you got food coming after me. But you know what? I'll get, I'll get done a whole lot quicker if you say Amen. I don't need amens right now when I'm preaching. <laughs> Give me some amens. All right. Also, this day is Super Bowl, Super Bowl Sunday, and we decided this is going to be our Super Bowl Sunday that we want to support the soup kitchen and bless those individuals in our county who are struggling to put food on the table every day. We are privileged. We are privileged. All of us are blessed, and so... Every dime that we take up at this moment, Deke, if you would, get that bowl. I told Deke that bowl we got, I, I want him to at least have to press that bowl down one time. <laughs> I want him to press that. So listen, this is an opportunity to bless people you may never see, but God sees what you do. So every penny of this money will go directly to the soup kitchen uh, and so what we're going to do, we're going to go old school style. Deke, if you would, stand right here in the middle. Stand right here in the middle. And we're going to ask this row here to stand. Uh, those who are going to participate, I want you to start out from the back. Uh, face the walls. Face the walls. Face the wall. Stand. Face the wall. This row, stand. Face the wall. Get your money, what you're going to bless these hungry people with. Face the wall, start off on the back, and just bring what you have. you've given anybody else uh, need to give we want to be a blessing to 
uh, the soup kitchen. They do an amazing job uh, with feeding those who are hungry in our county. Nick. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just want to come to you, Father, thanking you for this opportunity to give, God, to give back to the community of Heavenly Father what you have gave to us. God, we ask you to continue to bless each and every one in this room, God. Continue, Heavenly Father, to bless them with hearts and minds and finance, Heavenly Father, and good health. And God, we ask you to continue to bless Word of Change and bless our leader and each and every one in this community, God. We thank you and we give you glory. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Grab your Bible. Stand with me. Grab your Bible. Stand with me. Turn to the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John, John chapter 6. Everybody who is blessed to have working legs stand as we read God's holy word together on this Super Bowl Sunday. John chapter 6, and we're going to begin reading at verse 53. It is a very strange text, but bear with us, and I hope and pray that with the aid of the Holy Ghost, we'll unpack it and you won't run out. Uh, John chapter 6, verse 53. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your father ate the manna and are dead, he who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, therefore, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, do you also want to go away? And he said to the 12, do you also want to go away? You may be seated. I want to talk to you on the Super Bowl Sunday from the subject, make the right call. You may be seated. Make the right call. We all know that in just a few hours, Super Bowl 57 will kick off. Everybody has their prediction of who's going to win. Even if you don't have a dog in that fight, you still probably choose which team you think is going to be the one that wins. But the truth of the matter, I don't know who's going to win. And the truth, I don't really care. I'm going to watch for the commercials. And I want to see Rihanna at halftime. But let's, let's, let's think about it. This time tomorrow, though, all of us going to have to deal with the armchair quarterbacks. Those individuals who going to tell us uh, who made the best call and who made the worst play and which referee cheated. And they're going to be able to give us commentary on the game with precise information. 
Don't let us know that they should have did this. They should have kicked when they ran. He should have thrown when he did this. They are armchair quarterbacks. They are the most proficient callers of the game. After the game. The truth of the matter, most of them probably have never even played in a high intense game like the Super Bowl. Some of them hadn't even played football at all. And it's easy after the game to say if the coach made the right call or bad call. It's easy after the game. But when you're in the heat of the moment and you got to make a decision that could follow you for the rest of your life, not just your career. If you miss this field goal or if you hit this field goal, you're going to have to answer questions about it for the rest of your life. Sometimes those kind of decisions are hard to make. And I know an armchair quarterback, he makes them every day after the game. You know, life presents us sometimes choices that we have to make. We got to make a call and we realize that depending on how I answer this, depending on what decision I make, it could impact my life for the rest of my life. One of the greatest things that happened to uh, the NFL was instant replay. Instant replay probably came on the scene in the 80s. Of course, it was not uh, as, as good as it is now. I mean, the technology now is amazing. But you got to understand when instant replay initially came, we were still watching uh, VHS. <laughs> we, 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 we still had, uh, uh, what do you call them? I don't even remember. VCRs. Thank you, Dr. Carson. We still had VCRs. You know, you, you couldn't skip to scenes. You know, if you wanted, you wanted to catch up, you had to <laughs> How many remember when the tape? popped up out of the thing and then you have to do this right here so when that technology hit it changed the whole game because now when a call or play was made they go back to instant replay but initially when it started they didn't like it so it stayed there for a few years and every year each year the owners had to vote to use it So after about six years, they decided, you know what, it's no good. But then in the 90s, it rolled around, and of course, the technology that we have now is perfect. Now, when it's an instant replay, you get to watch that play. You get to watch that call from all different angles in 4K. They even have the ability to bag it up slowly. (laughs) And you're able, watch this, you're able to call back a bad play. But can I tell you, life doesn't have instant replays. Some of your decisions that you make could change the very course of your life. There are some decisions out there that if you don't really think them through, you may regret them for the rest of your life. And can I, can I tell somebody? There's somebody here right now, you are living with the consequence of a call you made. You you decided because in the heat of the moment, it felt like the right call. It felt like the right decision to make. And now you're dealing with it. Hopefully, you've learned from it. Uh, uh, at, At 54 now, I'm slow in making decisions. At 34... You know, I'm quick because I think I'm sharp, think I'm smart, and then realize that I need to think through some stuff because I have come to realize that we have to live with our decisions. We have to live with our decisions. And sometimes my bad call on a decision will not only impact and affect my life, but it affect everybody that's connected to me. You decided to get in that car, young man. You decided to go ahead and hit the joint. You decided to ride around. You decided to sit in the car while they went in the store and robbed the store. Now you and your family incarcerated. 
<clears throat> Am I right? When somebody you love go to jail, you go to jail too. Because now you got to receive calls from the jailhouse. You got to go visit them at the jailhouse. You got to write letters. You got to put money on their books. You'd be like, I'd be glad when we get out. <laughs> this is where we are in the text this afternoon. They got to make a decision. And this decision that they have to make is, shall I continue to follow Jesus or not? Shall, do, do I walk away from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords or do I stay with them? Most of them have already decided because they didn't like what he said. The Bible says that verse 6 and 66 how about that? John 6 and 66. Listen what it says. Of course, that's the number of man. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. They made a call to walk away from Jesus because they didn't agree what he said or they didn't fully understand what he said or they didn't even like what he said. You got to understand what's going on here in chapter 6. In chapter 6, in the beginning, Jesus is ministering to the masses. He looks out and he tells Philip, Philip, where are we going to find food to feed all of these? Philip said, we only have a few dollars, and that wouldn't even give everybody a cracker. And then one Andrew comes and said, but there's a boy who has two little fish and five little barley loaves of bread, five little hot dog buns. And the disciple says, what is that? Among so many, Jesus says, sit them down. 5,000 men, not counting the children, so we probably think about 15,000 people. Jesus takes the bread and the fish, breaks it, feed everybody. He says, take up what's left, and there's 12 basket full. And the text goes on to say that Jesus leaves them, goes to the mountain to pray. He escapes from them because they were about to apprehend him and make him king. And Jesus realized that he didn't come here to be that kind of king. He leaves, disappears, they can't find him. Next day the crowd comes and they come to Jesus and say, Jesus, where were you? We were looking for you. Jesus says, does he cold hearted man? Jesus said, you weren't looking for me. Because of the signs, you were looking at me because of the fish dinner. He said, the only reason you were looking for me because you want to eat again. And Jesus says, you got to understand that the bread that entered your belly, you can eat that and you won't die. He says, but the bread I tried to give you will give you eternal life. Well, he says, well, give me that bread. They didn't understand what he was talking about. They were still thinking about physical bread. And Jesus had shifted into the spiritual. And can I tell you, many times there will be some who no longer walk with Jesus because you were more concerned about what Jesus and the church can do for you than who he was. Let me say this and get in trouble. There are some folk who don't even know the church exists until they want something. Hello, hello, uh, uh, Dr. Belton. Th this is Shaquilla, and uh, my, my rent due, and I was wondering if... Here's the question I always ask. Have you called your pastor? Have have your church done anything for you? Well, um, I, I, don't, I don't have a church. Hmm. It's, it's crazy how some in the world only view the church as a social service department. And the reason why they, they walk away from the church because they don't find the magic they thought was in there. 
They, they don't want to pray because prayer don't get stuff moved. They don't come to Jesus because, because Jesus is the son of God, because Jesus died for them. They come to Jesus because they want to get something. I want a blessing pressed down, shaking together, run it over. But you got to understand that you got to first love him. Jesus tells them, you didn't look for me because of who I am, you look for me because of what you think you can get from me. You want another free dinner. He says, but I am trying to give you this eternal bread. They say, give me that bread. Jesus says, I am the bread. I am the bread of life. Say, so your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and they died. But if you eat this bread, you will live forever. You will live forever. It's like, Jesus says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood. Hold up, that's some. Come on now, I know y'all trying to get deep and spiritual, but when you first hit it, you be like, eat your flesh and drink your blood. Why were you smoking up on that mountain, Jesus? He said, Verse 48, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which come down from heaven that one may eat of and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh which I shall give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? They couldn't understand it. And they decided to walk away from him. Let me, let me tell you, you can follow God, you can love God, and you can serve God and not fully understand God. You, you don't have to know every scripture in this Bible. You don't, know how to, you don't have to know how to interpret nothing. You can just learn how to love God because of who he is. You don't have to understand it. And sometimes it may get confusing, but here's the thing. The Holy Spirit that God has given us will give us an understanding of the things we don't understand. And sometimes if we can get out of our flesh and tap into our spirit, you will be able to see things that you have not seen. These Jews, watch this, they were worried so much about filling their bellies that they missed the opportunity to fill their soul. Don't you get so caught up in your creature comforts, comforts, that you miss the creator of the universe. You get to that place where you got to have to make a decision. Do I follow my fears? Do I follow individual? Do I follow the world? Or do I follow Jesus? Dr. Blackaby in his book, His Spirits in God, he calls this the crisis of belief. When, when, you, when you come to that fork in the road, when you got to decide, do I go with God or do I stay with the world? Do I go with God or do I keep my wife happy? Do I go with God or do I make sure the church don't vote me out? Do I go with God or do I not say what I know I need to say because I'm afraid to get fired? Christ is a belief when you, when you reach that fork in the road and whatever call you make, right or left, will determine who you're going to be for the rest of your life. Because here's the thing about God. God's not going to allow you to straddle the fence with him. He, he wants you to be hot or cold. <laughs> He, he don't want you one foot in and one foot out. He says, if you're going to be for me, be for me. Let's go. Let's do it. For no man, John 9 and 62, no man who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Which road you're on? 
said, this thing don't work, you know, being in the world a little bit and then, you know, coming to church. It don't work. Look, man, choose one world. Don't be sorry in both of them. You're a horrible sinner and you're a horrible saint. Y'all done been there. Forgot what house you in, you know. You know, at night, you, uh, 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 uh. And then Sunday, you like. Choose a side. Decide which road you're going to travel. There are some of you here, and I believe it, that you made that decision years ago. That you, you've gone so far down the road with Jesus that there's no return. That there's nothing to go back to. I don't have nothing to go back to. This is it. I don't put all of my eggs in this one basket. I, I, I don't know nothing on the street. I try to act like I'm tough and a thug, but I, I've been out the game so long. <laughs> you know, it don't even matter what I have on. I just, it's almost like I walk around with a bad, say, preacher. <laughs> I was in Columbia the other day. And, and, and helped this young man and his family just bought them something to eat. And he looked at me while we standing in KFC. He said, you a pastor? <laughs> I laughed. I said, I said, yeah. I was in the barber shop just last Thursday. Young guy, had locks. And uh, I had on my sweats, had been exercising, sitting there. He looked at me. He said, you a pastor? I said, most of the time. He said, you look like a pastor I know. I said, yeah. He said, yeah, it, it's going to come to me. He's sweeping the hair up in the barbershop. Then it, it almost dropped. He said, I know. You look like a uh, belter. You favor Pastor Belton. <laughs> Timmy, Timmy going to own a barbershop says, what, where does Pastor Belton preach at? He said, I think he preach over there on 221. <laughs> Timmy going to say, won't you ask him where he preach at? He said, where he at? He said, that's him you're talking to. <laughs> <laughs> Whole barbershop laughing, you know. But the thing is, you have to decide Whose side you on? And I will tell you that following Christ will cost you something. That you will have to take up your cross and follow him. It will cost you something to live like Christ will have you to live. And they were not willing to pay this price. So in verse 66, it says, from that time, many of his disciples, many of his disciples, many of those that he had been teaching, many of his disciples no longer walk with him. Let me ask you this question. Do you know someone who was once in church and now no longer come? And I know we want to we want to call them wicked, we want to call them sinful, but maybe they hit maybe they hit that fork in the road. And maybe there wasn't another Christian to tell them you don't want to go down there. I, I know I know right now following God seems hard. But is there anybody here can testify with me that is worth it? That I have not lost anything that I gave up in the world. To follow him. He said many of them no longer walk with him. And then watch Jesus. Jesus turns to the 12. Turns to his core group. Turns to the one that he's been walking with, working with. Uh, he asked them, so what you going to do? I told you Jesus was a gangster. What you going to do? You want to go to? Huh? You, you want to lead to? You, you've gotten to the place where you can't fully understand what I say. So do you want to go to? And I love Peter. You don't like him, but I like old cursing Peter says, we ain't going nowhere. Verse 68, I didn't read it. Let me read it for you. Peter says, Lord, 
where can we go? Peter said, where shall we go, Lord? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Peter says, I ain't going nowhere. I didn't understand what you were talking about, blood, meat, and bread, but I ain't going nowhere. I don't like the preacher sometimes, but I ain't going nowhere. The music is not right all the time, but I'm not going nowhere. Sometimes folk get on my nerve in the church, but I'm not going anywhere because you have the words of eternal life. What is it, hear me, what is it that will cause you to walk away from God. What situation, what, uh, what pain, what, what loss will cause you to turn away from your faith? I don't have nothing. Because he didn't see me through too much. I wish I had one witness. I, I told a group yesterday, sometimes God frustrates me because he doesn't answer me as quick as I want him to answer me. Sometimes I want God to fix stuff right now, but you know what? I ain't going nowhere. Because God has seen me through. And even when I don't think that he's working, when I don't think that he's moving, he's always working it out. How do you know? Because I'm still here. Come here, somebody. The mere fact that you're still here is testimony that God is still working. God is still moving. God is still working a miracle out. Because I don't know about you, I know I don't deserve to be here. But I thank God that God looked past my faults and supplied all my needs. I'm not going nowhere. Peter says, Peter says, God, we ain't going nowhere, Lord. You have the words of eternal life, and we also know that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Now watch Jesus, and I'm going home. Jesus says, did I not pick you 12? Did I pick you myself? Did I, did I choose you, saw you, Peter, and your brother fishing? Didn't I tell you, come on, drop your nets, follow me? He says, did I pick you 12? And verse 71, he says, and one of you are devil. <laughs> let, let me say this. Let me say this. You, you think sometime when it gets tough in the church, that's when the devils leave. Devils don't leave when trouble happens. Devils stay around to watch trouble happen. Devils stay around to help trouble to happen. But you got to understand Jesus knew who his devil was. But yet it did not hinder his progress. Yet it did not cause him to do things differently. Because Jesus had a mission. And you got to understand that your devils that God allowed to stay are there for a purpose. If it had not been for your devils, you wouldn't be praying the way you prayed. If it had not been for the devils in your life, you would not be the woman of God and man of God that you are. Somebody ought to thank God that all the devils didn't leave. He says, one of you, one of you is a devil. Verse 71 says, he spoke of Judas, the son of Simon, for it was he who would betray him, being one of the twelve. He didn't leave. He stayed because he had a purpose. Here's the thing. John stayed. John loved Jesus. In the book, uh, he's the author. There's a, John loved Jesus. He often found himself laying his head on Jesus' breast. But John did not push Jesus to his destiny. He, he loved John, and Jesus enjoyed John loving him, but John didn't push Jesus to his destiny. It was Judas. 
Judas is the one that speeded up the progress. Judas is the one that pushed him to the cross. And all I'm saying to you, quit worrying about what the devils are doing and focus on what God is calling you to do. Because if you get caught up with the devils, you're going to make the wrong call and you're going to spend your time fighting folk instead of trying to be faithful to what God has called you to do. Make the right call. Keep following God when you don't understand him, when you don't see him move, when you don't hear him, when it seems like he's silent, stay with him. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. God, God will work it out. I'm not going to tell you what you're not going to go through, but I promise you staying with God is the answer. And when this thing called Christianity gets difficult, and it will, sometimes you're going to ask God, why this? Why me? And you're not going to get answers sometimes, but that's no reason to turn from God and leave. You may not understand what you're going through now. You may not understand why you're going through, but I've learned to trust God when I can't feel God. I've learned to trust God when I can't see God. I've learned to trust God when I can't hear God. And I just decided I'm going to stay with God. It does not matter what comes, come hell or high water. It does not matter. I'm not going nowhere. And you know the reason why I'm not going nowhere? I'm going home because can't nobody. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. I done had lovers, I done had money, I done had this, but is there anybody in this house that God's been good to you, that God has brought you down to this very moment? God has healed your body. God has delivered your soul. Why would you walk away from a God like this? Can't nobody, haven't nobody done me like Jesus? Let me ask you, I'm home. I'm going home. Has it been good to you? Maybe that's not the right question. Is he worth following? Is he worth serving? Is he a good God? Will he make a way out of no way? Can he heal your body? Can he set you free? I'm talking about Jesus. He is worth. He's worth following. And here's the thing stand to your feet I'm going here's the thing even <laughs> even when I wasn't good to him even when I didn't deserve it can anybody testify with me he was still good he still made a way <laughs> he still provided and here's the thing we don't talk about this much but when you love God like you should, God will love you back. And even when you start to drift, God will love you enough to snatch your behind back. <laughs> Only three people know. Anybody ever been snatched by God? So y'all love talking about how God, oh, God loves me and grace and mercy. But sometimes God will be like Big Mama. Sometimes God will come up in your situation. Sometimes God will pull. Yeah, anybody had a mama that will wait till you go to bed at night and you think that the whooping is gone and all of a sudden in the midnight hour you feel some coolness on your legs and then it's <laughs> God is that way because he loves you. He chased those he loved. And maybe there's somebody today Maybe, maybe you were in the group where you never joined God on this journey. But you need to. You need to accept the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Make him Lord of your life. Maybe you're in that group. Today is a good day. And maybe, maybe you were in the group where I kind of fell off a little bit. I'm, I'm not doing what I used to do. I'm I'm not focused like I used to focus. I'm, I'm a little off. Maybe you're in that group. The day is your day to get back on track with him. 
If you're out there today and you, you don't know the Lord, you never gave your life to him, but you want to. The Bible says if you believe in your heart, profess with your mouth that God sent Jesus to die on the cross to give his body as bread, to shed his blood that we can drink. And that's what we do when we do communion. That's what the Lord's Supper is. It's a reminder that his body was given, that his blood was shed. And as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's coming until he returns again. But as often as you do it, do it in the remembrance of me. Remember that I gave you bread from heaven. Remember that my blood was given. And the Bible says, if you're willing to repent of your sins, he would come and live in your heart. Maybe that's you. You want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Just step out from where you are and meet me at the altar. Hallelujah. Maybe out there and you, you, you're already saved, but you need a church home. If you're out there and you want a night with the word of change and make this your family, you too step out from where you are and meet, here, meet us here at the altar. Or maybe you're out there and you, you drifted a little bit and you need to get back on course. That's you too. Come, come. Maybe you just desire prayer. The altar is open for prayer. Come and join the winning team. Sing that now. Grab the hand of someone close to you. Remember immediately after service, go to the fellowship hall, enjoy some great soup. I think they got uh, a variety of soups. Uh, and so we want to fellowship with you and tell all of you amazing, beautiful women, happy Valentine's Day. If we don't hear it Tuesday, you hear it right now. Father, we thank you for this time together. Thank you, God that the choice we made to join you and to unite with you is a choice that takes us into eternity. God, we pray for those, we pray for those, God, who were once a part of the body. For whatever reason, God, maybe they suffered church hurt and they walked away. God, we pray, we pray, God, that you would pull them back. And we pray, God, that you would use us in that process. May we speak words of encouragement. May we pray for those who are departed from the faith. May we pray for those who have never come to know you in the free pardon of their sins. Thank you, God, for a reminder that you are a good God. And even, God, when we don't understand you, even when we can't see you, even when we can't feel you, we can trust you. Because your word says that you will never leave nor forsake us. That you are a good father who takes care of his children. Thank you now for these, your people. God, as they stand at the altar, God, they come for many different reasons. But God, we are grateful that you are able to hear and to read all of our hearts. And Father, I just pray that you would grant unto them what they need. There may be a father here, God, they're struggling. Bless him, God. There may be a mother who's heavy, God. God, give her what she needs. There may be a young person, God, they're struggling with a decision. Father, give them wisdom. And there may be some of us, God, that we're trying to live with the consequences of decisions we made in the past. God, we know that you are a redeemer. And God, we pray for redemption.
Father, we give you glory because, God, we know you can, we know you will, and we know you shall. Father, thank you now. Forgive us of our sins, God. Cleanse us and give us another chance. Father, we pray your blessing upon the food that we're about to receive. Thank you for the hands that have prepared it. May it give us strength to continue to do your will. Bless the hands, God, that have given. Bless the hands that shall give. Break it and multiply. And Father, we certainly pray, God, for the soup kitchen and the work that they do. We pray for the individuals that come through that door. May not only their bellies be filled, but may they hear this eternal word, this eternal truth, and come to know you as Lord and Savior. Now, may the grace of God be with us, keep us, hold us, and direct us. For us in Christ Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Have an amazing Sunday. We'll see you in the fellowship hall.